How's it going, people? I must be getting closer to the end. I'm on page 21, I believe. Yeah. Hmm. And I'm even further behind when it comes to captioning my old videos. But I'm getting there. Had to make this hard on myself. But I wanted to make it easier on the few wonderful individuals watching my videos. The Roman soldiers, however, being at length weary with butchery and more than satisfied with blood, for a short time sheathed their swords and betook themselves to plunder. They collected multitudes of Jews, husbands, wives, children, and servants, formed a market and set them up at Vindu for slaves. They sold them for any trifle. While purchasers were but few. Their lawgiver Moses had forewarned them of this. According to Deuteronomy, uh, and ye shall be sold for bondsmen and bondswomen, and no man shall buy you. What a burn! <laughs> uh, tremendous indeed must be a, the lot of those. Wait, tremendous indeed must the lot of those be. Who reject the Messiah and are found fighting against the Son of God. Often had these Jews heard, read, but little it seemed did they understand the sense of the tremendous passage relative to the Jewish rejectors of Christ. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sole displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion? Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Thus saith the Lord, wait, thus saith the Lord, say, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a, a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter, said the Lord by the prophet Ezekiel. Alluding to this very event. Uncanny. The sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slaver. Cry and howl, son of man, and that's not capitalized, but what it must mean to the rest of us. Smite upon thy thigh, smite thy hands together, and let the sword be doubled in third time. The sword of the slain, I have set the point of the sword against all gates. At their heart, that their hearts may faint, and their ruins multiplied. Ah, it is made bright. It is wrapped up for the slaughter. Such and much more were the divine denunciations of this very scene which the infidel Jews would not escape, but would incur. 
and even a merciful God shrunk not from execution? Let anti-Christian powers, yea, let all infidels and gospel despisers consider this and tremble. Need to consider it some more, I guess. <sighs> the whole lower city now is in the possession of the Roman legions. After the respite noted, was set on fire. But the insolence of the devoted Jews in a part of the higher city remained unabated. They even insulted and exasperated their enemies. As though afraid, the work of vengeance might not be sufficiently executed. <laughs> They're not mad enough yet. <laughs> The Romans brought their engines to operate upon the walls of this higher branch of the city, still standing, which soon gave way before them. Before their demolition, Titus reconnoitered the city and its fortifications and expressed his astonishment that it should ever fall before his army. He exclaimed, Had not God himself aided our operations and driven the Jews from their fortresses, it would have been absolutely impossible to have taken them. For what could men and the force of engines have done against such towers as these. Yes, unless their rock had sold them for their iniquities, no enemy could have prevailed against Jerusalem. Josephus, who was an eyewitness of all the scenes, says, all the calamities which ever befell any nation since the beginning of the world were inferior to the miseries of the Jews of this awful period. Then again, Josephus also proclaimed Titus to be the Messiah, delivering the Jews from themselves, apparently. Anyway, that's uh, I'm going to stop at the top of page 22. We're still on chapter 1. It's going to be a slow, interesting process.